Okay. Hello, Giovanni. How are you? <laughs> I am fantastic. Thanks. Good. Thanks. I always feel like my Italian comes out when I say your full name. I'm like, Giovanni. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. It's so fun. I'm so happy you're here. Honestly, I've, first of all, in meeting you, I had so many people tell me, you have to meet Gio, you have to meet Gio. And in meeting you, you are one of the most humble and kind and I'm going to use the word gentle, but not in a like meek way. You just have such a calmness and a presence to you that I think is so admirable for what you've created. And just the way you present yourself in a room is so warm and approachable. And so, yeah, you're, you're really inspiring for people to watch and, and see everything that you're creating. What a fun way to start a conversation. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you every day if you want. <laughs> cool. um, but I'm excited to have you here. I really want to dive into, you know, who you are, what you've created with Archangel Academy, and talk a little bit more about building communities and giving other entrepreneurs tips on, you know, how to build their business, how to network, how to build those communities. So we can dive in that as we go along. But let's start out with, you know, who are you? And what have you created in a very general sense? And then we can dive deeper. Um, so we'll start maybe present day and maybe yeah. reverse engineer all the way back. Yeah, to, cool. Okay. Oh, you're going to get real deep on this. I love it. Who, yeah, are, you, who I, are you as a person? This is awesome. I am a curator and connector of people with giant hearts who are led by a calling and feel like they're on this planet to change the world in some way mm -hmm. and to transform people and to um, share their gift or their superpower or whatever language they want to use in a way that creates impact. And Archangel is a giant community of people like us, like me and you, uh, who, who share that philosophy where we are driven by transformation and mission and impact not necessarily having money as the goal, but money isn't a bad thing. It's the tool that creates the impact. So my, you know, my thing is be a millionaire. That's awesome. Be a billionaire, but just make the definition of those words mean to change the lives of a million people or a billion people versus make a million bucks. Money, money is just an awesome tool that allows us to make that change. Um, I love that. And we produce events for people like us. We, I have coaching programs, masterminds, any way that I can um, curate and connect amazing humans who want to all support each other's missions. Because I, I, I believe that all growth happens in community, um, all healing happens in community, all success happens in community. None of us can do it alone. Yeah. And in that, in that same space, the, the more successful you become, the more isolating it becomes. Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're one of us because people don't get us you can't talk to your friends sometimes you can't talk to your team you can't talk to your parents or whatever uh, they just don't understand <laughs> a little yeah. Will Smith reference um, <laughs> and, and what we all crave is belonging and this is what why you're so good at what you do it's like cr creating a safe space where someone can be themselves um, and in community where other people are like us right so that's who we are that's what we do yeah. um, Arch archangel summit is our big annual event um, we'll have like three thousand people this year it's our fourth annual and we bring in huge speakers but you know the, if someone comes for the first time they think it's because of the speakers or or the content or the learning yeah and they always come back for the community because they want to be a part of this thing mm -hmm. um and it feels like family even with three thousand people yeah, I noticed that when I came to your event, the caliber of people that were there and the willingness to help others and connect was like no other. It didn't feel like a cheesy networking event. It was really people <laughs> looking to build a business who were also successful because I think you, you hit something really important that so many people think that when we are of service, it's bad to want to make money and realizing that the money helps us to be of more service and help more people. And right. you've made such a good example of that in your community and supporting those entrepreneurs and doing that. Yeah, it's so, I, I mean, there's different philosophies and I've been around different groups where I didn't feel like I fit in. Mm -hmm. You know, there's the, there's the internet marketing crew where it's just about how do we make more money? How do we take from people? 
Um, and that doesn't align with me. And then there's the, um, on the other end of the spectrum, these social entrepreneurs, or I don't know what they would define themselves as, but they think money's evil. It's like, no, we just want to be a nonprofit. Money's bad. And to me, money is neutral. It's not, it's just a tool. It's like yeah. any other tool. It's, it's more about the intention of the person using it versus the actual thing itself. And our whole community, like the event you came to was a private mastermind event we do where, you know, there's people in the room with revenues in the millions and sometimes we'll have a couple of billionaires and it doesn't matter because we're all creating something that makes impact versus being like greedy and selfish and just like, I'm not going to tell anyone, like how open were people to share their stuff with you? Yeah, it was so beautiful. And it's really a collaborative group because right. we know that we all have something different. Naturally, there's no competition because we're all different. And so it's always, you know, how can we help each other and provide more value to our communities and to help more people? Because what I can do, you can't and vice versa. And so it was really nice to see that and people be so open. It's, it's the difference between having a scarcity mindset versus an abundance mindset. There yeah. are people who are very wealthy who have a scarcity mindset. They want to protect uh, their stuff, whatever that is, because they're afraid it's going to be going away versus people like us who have an abundance mentality, even if you're not making a lot of money yet. Yeah. Um, it's all about sharing your gift and sharing your wisdom and sharing your resource and whatever that looks like to create change. Mm -hmm. And that often will lead to prosperity. Yeah, hundred percent. I believe that, you know, wholeheartedly it's so important, but so you have this vision to create Archangel. How I know, and you might even go into this in, in this question, but how do you actually start it? You're sitting there thinking like, I don't feel like I belong. I have this vision. <laughs> and then what? You know, there's so many people within the community that have great ideas that want to start their business. And they're so overwhelmed with the execution and the starting process. They just don't even know where to go. Right. And people often get paralyzed with the technical side of things yeah. like how do I make a website? How do I do a Facebook ad? And how do I have lead generation and all these things that people yeah. are told <laughs> you don't need any of that. Like Archangel technically doesn't have a website yet. Mm -hmm. We've been around for six years. There isn't an archangel.com. Um, th there are landing pages for things we do, mm -hmm. but you don't need any of that complication. To me, the most important thing, is to start off by figuring out what is the actual change you want to create and who is the specific person you want to serve. And right. it doesn't have to be 10 million people. That's the other fallacy. It's like pick one person, mm -hmm. change one person's life somehow and figure out what you can do either with your gift or your talent, your expertise or your connection or your resources um, where you can help that person achieve their bigger future, their dream come true, their mm -hmm. transformation. Um, and then multiply that over and over again go from one to 10 and go from 10 to 50, a hundred, 150. And yeah. you've literally built a business. And, and by doing that, you can see patterns in their language and how they describe their, their frustrations or their complaints in the things they need. And then you develop deeper and deeper relationships with a very specific group of people who are all the same or have similarities and you become their leader. Essentially you, you lead the community, you lead the tribe mm -hmm. and start with the community first and serve them versus trying to come up with a solution or a mousetrap or a thing and saying, who needs this thing? Yeah. It yeah. both ways work. I just feel the first way works better. And do you feel like you were able to do that because you wanted a community of people that had felt the same as you? So I was actually at a conference this past weekend and they taught, talked a lot about creating our own story and our own experiences so that we can tie that together and better target who we want to target because chances are they've felt the same. So do you right. think that we're always creating businesses based on our own experiences? It's, there are different avenues or paths to take. That is one of them where, and it's often the simplest one because if you are like one of us, if you are very giving and want to serve, part of that means you felt pain before. You've gone through trauma, you've gone through pain, you've gone through challenges, whatever it is. And deeply, you want to help other people either not feel the pain you felt or fast track right through it so that they can escape it as quickly as possible because you know what it means to be in those shoes. So if you, if you envision being on a path or a journey, um, 
the business model is turning around, seeing who's on the path behind you and helping them get further down the path as quickly as possible. So that is the most simplest and basic business model and it works. Yeah, I love um, it. Right, because you have experience on, yeah. that, on that path. You've, you've cut down all the trees in the forest and you're the trailblazer and there's people behind you. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can really scale that. Yeah. How did you talk? I'd love to hear a little bit more about the pain that you experienced and how you cut through that. Oh, so much. Um, the, uh, the, the overarching story started when I was a kid. Um, like, let me just do some origin story stuff. Yeah. When I was in fourth grade or grade four, cause we're Canadian, um, at a school called St. Gabriel, the Archangel. I was, the school did IQ testing, and I think this happens in all schools, yeah. and I was labeled as gifted with a high IQ. So once for a day and a half a week, I would be bused to a different school for a gifted class. And then at lunch on the second day, I, I would be bused back. And on that day, I was, I was always bullied, um, made fun of for being too smart, being a nerd, being a geek, all these things. And it was very painful and traumatic. And days I would go home crying. I'm like, why are they making fun of me? I don't understand. So I learned to hate the word gifted. It meant it was like attached to the pain. And then in like grade seven and eight, I started getting into comic books, um, fell in love with them. And again, back then, this is like in the um, late eighties, early nineties. If you were into comic books, you were a nerd. And that word was a, was a negative word. Now yeah. it's like, you're the coolest person on the planet. <laughs> I know, right. We're all nerds. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I would read these things in, in secrecy. <laughs> um, and it was in high school, I discovered the X-Men, which is, I think most people know what that is now. The very first page I opened said, Xavier School for Gifted Youngsters. So there's the word gifted, but now the context is superpower. It meant people with superhuman abilities. And it changed my whole paradigm around the word. I was like, oh my God, the thing I was made fun of is a superpower. Hmm. Um, and in high school, I would tell people when I grow up, I want to lead a team of superheroes. It was like a, a joke for them, but not for me. <laughs> <laughs> and when I was 16, and by the way, my high school was St. Mike's, another archangel. Okay. Um, in, in, when I was 16, or actually when, I, when we were 15, we started going to these things called all ages dance parties. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I, me and my best friend at the time were like, we can do this. So when I was 16, we somehow managed to rent a banquet hall I don't know how we signed a contract. Right. Um, we produced our first event and we had a thousand people at wow. 16 years old. And, you know, I was like, I walked out, I don't know, like three or $4,000. Wow. At that age too, you're like, holy yeah. moly. Yeah. <laughs> I, I remember talking to my buddy. I'm like, I can't believe we're doing this thing that we're good at and we love doing and we're making money. That's so crazy. And I was so giddy and excited. And I want, you know, the next morning I saw my parents, and I was happy and their thing was stop their messaging was stop dreaming, hmm. get your head out of the clouds. Don't do this party thing. Make sure you go to university. Um, so there's always this like a bit of conflict and that, that paradigm has always been there. And I feel like it's there for everybody. The, the idea of stop being yourself, yeah. stop standing out, stop doing the thing you're good at and do what everyone is supposed to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've seen that so many times. Um, but dreaming is my superpower and producing experiences. I figured out when I was 16, it's like, this is my thing. So I was always happy doing it. And then when I was told to stop doing it, I, I listened to my parents and my guidance counselors because they all said, go to, go to U of T engineering, get an engineering degree. And I'm like, I, I know I'm an entrepreneur. I want to go to business school. Mm -hmm. um, and that's when my depression started because, because I stopped doing the party thing. And it wasn't even about the part, like, my nickname was Johnny Angel back then. Hmm. So growing up, people called me Johnny and John. That's the English version of uh, Giovanni. And um, I've, you know, had never touched a drug. I've never been drunk. But I was throwing nope. parties. Yeah. Oh, interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I had very, on, on the drinking side, I, I can drink a lot, but I had crazy strategy with mm -hmm. like a bottle of water for every shot. So that I would <laughs> The Dance it all out. Yeah. And I've never felt, I don't know what a hangover is, I just, uh. um, but I got that nickname because I was like the goody two shoes guy in the nightclub, not doing anything bad. Right. Um, 
so the parties we would do for teens were like a safe, like this is when raves were a big deal. Mm. If you want to do the drugs and all that, you can go there. And our party was like the opposite. Um, but I was told not to do it. And when I stopped all the events, I fell into a deep depression and I didn't understand why. Um, there were days um, for anyone who's, is everyone in Toronto or is it people all over the world? Um, they're from all over, yeah. Okay, so in Toronto, we have a, a subway system and I would have to take the subway to school for, for university and I would not, I would be too anxious to get off the subway. So I would ride it for three hours sometimes, like back and uh, forth the whole uh, loop from like Yorkdale all the way to Finch and back. And um, What did that feel like? So like, because I haven't experienced, I've obviously experienced anxiety, but not to that extreme that I haven't been able to get off the subway. Like when you're in that moment, I want to understand what does that feel like for you to it's, just not be able to get off? It's like extreme fear. Hmm. Um, it's hard to, and it's been a while since I've experienced that, but yeah. um, there was a lot of anxiety and depression for almost two decades. Hmm. Wow. Because the, the path I was on wasn't aligned with who I was. And now, now I understand all this. Um, but I, I went through a whole bunch of stuff uh, like I'll shorten the story, but marketing has always been there. Doing events has always been there. And I got into real estate hmm. in 2009 and got really good at it. I was doing pre-construction condo sales for investors and I hated it, but I was making good money. So there was that conflict. And this happens, another pattern that happens to a lot of people where they get trapped because of reputation and, and income. And again, the depression started and I was way overweight and I wasn't happy, but yeah. People knew me at as this person doing this really good thing, but making the money allowed me to start investing in personal development and in mastermind groups and in conferences. And I was going crazy because I just wanted to get better. And I felt like all the groups I was in, there's always something missing and I never completely fit in. And that's how Archangel started because I needed to scratch my own itch and be around people like me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's so cool. I love that. And tell us a little bit about your growth in Archangel then. I mean, you can tell even just in listening to you, your intention is so pure. And I think that that really reflects your growth and what you've been able to accomplish because you weren't in it for the money. People knew that they could trust you and they right. knew they were in a safe place. Like you just automatically created that through intention. And for so sure. tell us a little bit more about that growth and what you've experienced because of where you were coming from. Well, the way it started was I invested a lot of time, which to me is the first asset we all have. It's, people think money, but money comes after time is the first amazing asset. And if you can actually leverage it and get an ROI in it, like how would you, how would you invest it as an asset? And to me, the way to do that is having clarity around who you want to help and then having a lot of deep conversations with those people to figure out where do they want to go? What, and what are the biggest obstacles preventing them from getting there? And then becoming the person who helps them overcome those obstacles. So in 2013, I did all kinds of lunches and coffees and little group meetings and masterminds, like all for free. I, it wasn't like a business thing. It was more investing my time and even just to help people. Were, and were you still depressed at this time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, but see, this, this, is, this was the key thing for me. These conversations were lighting me up mm. and it was like the antidote for the negativity yeah. because I can help people. And, and I shifted the spotlight away from my internal struggle mm. to other people. And by serving other people and helping, it actually felt really good. Yeah. So I think the key often, if you're feeling that struggle is help someone else, like take the, take the focus off of you for a sec mm. and just help someone. Um, and then I started seeing patterns in, in the language and in what they needed. And we did our first event in January of 2014. And because I had, I had helped so many people, I, these were the people I was going to invite to the event. Um, and because it was the first event, I, I needed to prove what I was doing would work. Mm -hmm. So my, my invitation back then was it's um, 500 bucks for a ticket, but don't pay just RSVP that you're coming and commit to coming. And then if you think it was worth it after, pay me after. Yeah. And that's how the whole thing started because cool. my whole thing was get rid of the risk for them. Just put on an incredible um, experience mm. and get the right people in the room to connect with each other because they're all like me. And once they meet each other and I'm really good at connection, I'm really good at the curation thing. Um, 
So I was able to use my, my superpowers to serve other people. Yeah. And then it just, it took off from there. And then it was still a side thing for my real estate business, but uh, by 2016, it felt like real estate was a terrible marriage and Archangel was my soulmate. And it was like, the contrast That's is so, <laughs> thanks. I, <love> that. <laughs> I had to, I had to stop real estate. And then that's when my, my capacity opened up and we started doing our big events like the Archangel Summit nine months later. And from January of 2016, when I quit real estate to September, when we did Archangel Summit, I lost 70 pounds. Just naturally because, because you were feeling better. Yeah. I, th I think so much of, uh, um, and maybe this is a, a health tangent, but yeah. um, so much of people's health issues comes from inflammation, that comes from stress, that comes from not being aligned with with their path and their decisions. Yeah, All of this weight on your shoulders um, from feeling not fulfilled or whatever it is and draining, right? And yeah. once you start doing things that charge your batteries, you have more energy to make better decisions mm -hmm. around health, eating, exercise, all these things. So yeah. I, I did eat right and I did exercise, but like, the 70 pounds that I was carrying around physically felt like 700 on my shoulders because of the shit I was going through. Wow. It's so true. And I think if any of you are watching and have body pain, emotional pain, it's a gift because it will show you you're either not in alignment, just like Gio is saying, and to pay attention. And I, even with my own body, I'm very extreme with it. I literally had like a little patch of eczema on my eye and I was like, oh, what am I not seeing properly? <laughs> like our body, however far you want to take it, our body and our emotions are always speaking to us. So if you are feeling that way, it's okay. It's a sign. Like, you know, it'll come through. Right. Do you still feel depressed now? Is that something you continue to battle with or you feel like you're completely in alignment? I don't feel depression. Um, there are, and the anxiety, like to give you a contrast, mm -hmm. uh, in 2008, I had a panic attack that was so bad. I thought it was a heart attack. I called the ambulance. I thought I was dying and I got rushed to the hospital. So I, I know what that feels like. Like yeah. I've, I've been on that extreme. I haven't had any of that since I started Archangel. Wow. Um, and now what, what will come up is, if I'm in a scenario that triggers pain or trauma from my childhood, mm -hmm. I'll feel like butterflies or I'll feel um, my body reacting to it. Mm -hmm. I'm just way more conscious now that that's what's going on, that right. it's not, I'm not going to die. There's not someone around the corner who's going to jump out and hurt me. It's, it's something in the present day reminding me of something traumatic in the past. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing I need to like not hide or run from, but just go deeper in it and, and allow myself to heal from that old stuff. And then it just doesn't bother you anymore. Yeah. Do you have any techniques that have worked for you to help you heal? Um, I think awareness is so important. Um, it's, it's, it's just a lot of learning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know but it's, and everyone's so different and there's so many resources. It can almost be overwhelming. I think some people that are in pain, they're again, even like with the business, they don't know where to start. Yeah. And so they're just looking for solutions and for it to go away. And they don't always know where to go. I think the, the one thing, and it may sound a bit biased, mm -hmm. but I know it's true is community. Mm -hmm. um, before this call is being interviewed for something. And I love this topic the idea of personal growth or self-development and the, the bullshit part of both of those phrases are personal and self because all growth happens in community. Um, even the word self care is a bit funny because healing is so much easier in community. Mm. You know, we, we've, we've oft, we've lost a lot of it because of the, how digital the world's become. Like even right now we're having a call through technology. No, I, yeah. Um, but you know, centuries ago, we were all touching in real life. We were all in a tribe. We were all connected in that way. And that's why I think events like ours mm -hmm. are so important to be in real life with people mm -hmm. that are, are there to support you and keep you safe. Um, 
And same with the, the bullshit phrase self-made, like no one succeeds alone. Yeah. Um, it's all done with a team and with a community. Yeah. Yeah. What, so you're, this is your superpower building community and networking. If someone is new to that whole concept, what can they do to be better at building a community and, and networking with other people? Well, to me, those are two different things. Okay. Um, so we'll cover both yeah. building community and networking or connecting. Yes. Um, building community starts with understanding who an individual community member is. Like if you had to design the avatar of a tribe member, um, and I, I like to think of it, you know, if you were creating your own city, what would, how would you define a citizen and what would the city be called? Mm. And what are the rules of living in that city? Right. So to me, community is based on values, belief structures, um, and what you stand for, what you stand against, all of that kind of um, philosophy and finding people who are aligned with the philosophy mm -hmm. and then figuring out where collectively they want to go. Like what is the dream future and what are the obstacles? Mm -hmm. It's always the same kind of thing. And it, it works for community building, it works for business building. Because I yeah. think when you're building a business, you start with a community and then serve them. Um, I have a like, question about that too. So when yeah. you're building community and you have this avatar and this, this city that you want to build, how do you enforce those rules? so that you continue the culture of the community that you're intending to build? You have to make them public or, or like known to the community what it means to be a member of the community. And then if someone, like I recently kicked someone out of one of our groups because they weren't aligned. Yeah. Um, so people either have to be, and excuse my language, a fuck yes or a no. Yeah. And like imagine you had um, a very exclusive nightclub or bar and picture two giant bouncers outside with a with a, a red carpet <laughs> and a clipboard. That's how you have to treat your community. And it, yeah. only people who are very aligned or fuck yes can come in. And when you do that, the people who are in feel bonded to each other because they get that they're a part of this thing and they know how to identify someone else who should be in. Mm -hmm. um, like I literally two hours ago, and we have a like a public Facebook group called Archangel Community. And I did, a, someone asked, is it okay to invite people to join? I'm like, absolutely, but they have to meet these criteria. And this is what it means to be in this group. Um, it's like having a, a code of conduct or a, yeah. a code. Um, so to me, that's so important. And when you do that right, you start to build culture. Mm -hmm. And that's based off of common beliefs, common values, and common language. Like, I, um, can I tell you a, a bit of, of a secret? Yeah, I'd love secrets. <laughs> I learned all of this from a couple of sources, but in, in 2013 and 14, when I was starting Archangel, I was doing a lot of research into tribe building. Mm. And I went to a Lady Gaga concert to do research, I, I, like, like a nerd. <laughs> uh, I was the only one with a pen and paper taking notes. Uh, but I discovered that part of building community and culture is that you need people to feel safe to be themselves. The idea is they should fit in by standing out mm -hmm. um, because in their day-to-day -day life, they may be bullied or feel unsafe to be the, the, their true self. And real community is when they can let go of all that crap and just be themselves in a space that's protected because everyone else is doing the same thing and is um, aligned in some way. Yeah. And at that, I learned that partially from Lady Gaga because if you've ever been to one of her concerts, it's like a Halloween party <laughs> but people aren't dressed up with a mask they're actually dressed up as themselves mm -hmm. and they're safe and she actually says you know i'm not going after the the typical audience the top 40 music people yeah i want the people on the fringe i want the people who are bullied i want the people who don't fit in because I, you're safe with me i'm your mama and then she has her own language and she's even branded the tribe themselves she calls them little monsters mm -hmm. so they have their own social media platform they have their own language they have this secret paw handshake thing <laughs> um, and that's what builds community by building culture having language yeah. um, and I also learned all of this uh, one of my good friends um, is a guy named Garib Seamus who's actually speaking at our event this year he's the founder of Comic-Con um, 
And Comic-Con is the same thing. Like when, when you're a comic book nerd and you have to do it in secret 10 or 20 years ago, this was finally the safe space to show up as yourself and be among other people that you can nerd out with yeah. who are passionate about the same thing. Um, and now comic book culture is like ma- not only mainstream, like if you look at the top 20 highest grossing movies of all time, 10 of them are comic books. It's so awesome. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing when you're building community, it's about creating a safe space for people to show up as themselves where they fit in by being themselves. So I, I like to say fit in by standing out. Yeah. Yeah. I love the way you put that. And it's, I mean, it's in a community, it's almost good to be different because you need to create something for those people. It, right. Now with social media, we get so distracted by what everybody's doing that we're just copying everybody's system. And what you're talking about right now is such a great example that creating something different is good and <laughs> will differentiate you and help service people that aren't being serviced. Right. Yeah. So then t- let's go a little bit into the networking part what how do you network and i'm sure there's even some tools that are similar but what are your tips to help network in creating that that culture around you um i think well first off i i often identify as introverted and i mm-hmm. think a lot of people do so connecting or networking for introverts is is a funny thing yeah um it's like kryptonite sometimes <laughs> the and even the word networking, I bet. Oh, I know. I hate it. it. <laughs> because like I've been to those events where everyone is trying to give you their business card and they want you to be their client. To some, it's so annoying. I don't, I, that to me isn't networking. That's a yeah. bullshit other thing. Um, and maybe instead of using the word networking, use the word like creating authentic connection. Mm, yeah. Um, so the right way is first off to find the right environment like find an event of people like you Mm -hmm. so that you're already fitting in and then you can skip like to me it's all relationship building so you can skip if you think of like romantic relationship you can skip the bullshit small talk which i who likes yeah no i don't know if anybody does make a comment right now because (laughs) i don't think i've met anyone that does but it's out of fear they don't know what else to say and then they're scared to go deep that they're like hey how's the weather (laughs) so i'll use my event as an example you know if you're one of us showing up you know you're in a room full of people like us so you can skip the small talk and, and jump right to intimacy which doesn't necessarily have to have a romantic meaning i think it just means deep connection and um finding someone if you you approach anyone and and being hyper curious about them and and having the the thought of how can i help this one person today Mm -hmm. um right and and taking the spotlight again off of yourself and putting it onto someone else and ask a million questions Mm -hmm. and watch what happens to me that's the easiest way especially if you're introverted yeah. Because the spotlight won't be on you. Yeah. And that person, like people are hyper interested in talking about themselves. It's just natural, which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. You can take advantage of that and just ask really good questions and not like make it, try to make it thoughtful or different. Mm-hmm. What are some of your favorite questions to ask people? Oh, I try to do it a different way. Like um, one of my favorite questions in general is what lights you up? Mm-hmm. It's different. Like, I don't ask, what do you do? That's like the worst. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or if you have to start with that, sometimes I go like, does it make you happy? Like, are you happy doing that? And they like stop or what? <laughs> what do you mean? Am I happy? Or just asking them a little bit further about like, what is your dream? I love that. And see like, what is your vision? What do you want to create? It's really beautiful. You really want to throw them off in a good way. Just say, so why are you so awesome? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. I was born this way, like Lady Gaga says. (laughs) Yeah. What is your vision now? I mean, you, you, I think you have a beautiful vision and you even mentioned that within why you created TLC or TLC. I created 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 TLC. TLC I love this awesome group of women. Right. Um, So then what is your vision now for Archangel? Uh, There's the crazy visions and the, the more... I want to hear the crazy ones. Um, world peace. Yeah. 
I, I know that's such a cheesy thing, and but it's I, I'm very serious about. I'm going to figure that out at some point. Um, and I want to gift forward a billion dollars to create impact, either uh, as charitable donations um, or as angel investment or micro loans to the community, especially to women yeah. who have trouble or female led business ventures where they have trouble or struggle getting funding. Mm-hmm. Um, this is why I think you and I too. Yeah. We got yeah. on this. Um, so make a lot of money and then reinvest it back in, into the community and not just financial support, but also uh, wisdom, mentorship, um, resource connection, mm-hmm. all that. So just keep building the community and yeah. building the movement of change makers and people who want to create impact and then change the world that way. I, I, I don't think one individual can make a dent in the universe, but as a collective, we can. Yeah. We, Archangel is doing that as, yeah. as a community. Yeah. And how are you evolving personally? You know, you have your vision for your business. What is your vision for yourself and how watching your evolution through this process, where do you want to go? I, um, feel called to serve at a higher and higher level. And I've, I've realized that entrepreneurship is the ultimate journey in personal development. If, if that makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> the more it will make you it just brings up everything in you <laughs> yeah like, the problems don't go away they get magnified and the, the more successful you become the more a, a spotlight shines on your shit mm-hmm. and trauma and all these things so for me now i don't feel the fears i used to feel it's weird i don't even know how to explain it i am i feel like a, a freaking jedi from star wars like <laughs> i i I can see the matrix and I need to evolve and I can now start to see where the pain points are and, and just constantly go deeper in the work and not be afraid of it anymore. Um, and evolve health wise. Like I, I feel like most disease stems from stress and inflammation and not being aligned. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and there's such an incredible mind body connection that, the Western world, and I'm not a woo-woo person, even though my company's called Archangel. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm right in the middle. Like I can, I can swing both ways to, to be traditional or whatever alternative. Yeah. I actually think it should be both, but um, our body is so smarter than our brain mm-hmm. and it can heal itself. Um, and I, want to become superhuman. I want to actually be a real superhero in terms of my health and wellness and my brain so that I can serve at a higher level and a higher level and a higher level. Yeah, that's really cool. What are you currently working through right now? And what's coming up for you right now, just active? Um, there's, there's a lot of trauma from my past um, that prevented me from speaking up. So the idea is and it's, ca- it's caused fear as an adult to not shine brightly because- of- I'm going through the same thing right now, Gio. <laughs> yeah. So I want to get out of my comfort zone to do things that I normally wouldn't do, which is being public, um, yeah. being in media or mm-hmm. on TV or, or sharing my philosophies more publicly. Like everything's been done mm-hmm. privately in the community. So if you're in Archangel, you you feel like you're my best friend and you know me. And if you're not, you're like, who the hell is this guy? And, and what is all this? Um, and I, I think I need to lead by example. Yeah, cool. So take a stand for things that I believe in and make massive change and not be afraid of repercussion because the I know the, the bigger this thing becomes, the more I'm going to be attacked. Mm-hmm. And I would, in the past, the fear has come from being attacked as a kid. Mm-hmm. and being bullied right? and all these things and now it's like fuck that um i don't have a choice i have a responsibility oh. yeah cool i love it we can keep each other accountable and anyone else who's listening you just shoot us a note we'll keep each other accountable <laughs> that's cool what and who is geo in your household and in your family you know you're building this amazing thing and building a community what does it look like inside your life so there's me and stephanie uh, my partner um, and we have three boys and, uh, 
everything we talk about publicly, we talk about privately. Mm. So Stephanie and I have routine and ritual in our relationship. Um, and it's a beautiful thing. And we date all the time and we're completely in love. And um, we, we work on the relationship, which people don't. So let me give context for that. <laughs> Um, anyone who has a business understands, I think the, the paradigm of working in the, in, sorry, in the business and then on the business, mm -hmm. like you're doing the day-to-day -day stuff and you're planning and strategizing is two different things. Yep. I think when you're in a relationship, you're always in a relationship, but you don't work on it. So we actually have like CEO partner meetings for the relationship to talk about what's going right. What's going like, let's plan the year out as if we're running a business. I know it sounds a bit. That's very interesting. Yeah, that's cool. And then um, to keep communication open in that way and set our goals and dreams as a family and get our kids involved. Um, and we have, like, she's a health goddess expert, brain expert. It's crazy. She's amazing. Um, so we, we start with the family first. Like our kids are 14, 8, and 6, or 14, almost nine and seven. <laughs> these birthdays keep happening um <laughs> we just keep getting older right and you know we see so many families where the kids young kids have a device and headphones at a, at a restaurant and there's no like they have our kids have very limited device time and we force them or force is the wrong word but we create structure around go outside and run around because boys need to move yeah. um and right now i know they're upstairs doing math and they're doing the, 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 it's um, like we call it genius time, mm -hmm. like time to actually learn. If if they don't have homework, um, just time to learn and and improve. Yeah. Um, and we we, you know, it, no one's perfect in this way. It's always an organic learning process, but we try really hard to get better and better. That's why Stephanie's show is called Better with Doctor Stephanie. It's not about being the best or perfect. That's such a crappy fallacy. It's it's more about what's the little things you can do today that will make tomorrow better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. So then what are the hardest things about being a dad? The hardest things about being a dad? Um, that whenever you feel friction or conflict or, or challenges from your kids, it's probably yourself being triggered from when you were a kid versus like your, your kids are perfect. Mm -hmm. even if they're misbehaving because what they're what's really happening is stuff is coming up to you yeah and if you're not conscious to that you're going to react or get angry or scream um versus staying present to realize they're just a mirror of your stuff mm -hmm. and they kids are such incredible empaths um that there's a beautiful opportunity to, to you for you to get better at being a better you and that translates into what happens with your kids yeah and dr oh, folly yeah she talks a lot about that it's really beautiful and really though it's all of our relationships even our friendships our romantic relationships it's always our own stuff and us needing to grow and evolve and not accepting the other person for who they are you know and you can feel when other people are projecting their own stuff onto you too oh, yeah. <laughs> you know so it's it takes a lot of courage in our world today to actually stay in alignment and be yourself without all of these other projections being absorbed into who we are. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to open it up for some questions too. If you guys have questions, feel free to, to ask some questions. I want to be cautious of time. So we only have a few minutes left. Oh, you're getting some encouragement here, Gio. People are saying world peace is totally attainable in our lifetime. It is not crazy. And they are loving your business slash relationship stuff sure. and talking about that. Do you have any other relationship tips? Because it <laughs> sounds like you have a beautiful relationship. I also love, and obviously leading a women of or community of women, they talk a lot about how it's really hard to find a guy who is open to evolution and, and self-development and that growth. Is that an age thing? Is it, um, you know, give us a little bit more chat about the male species <laughs> and some tips on, on how to help a man grow and cultivate and really support him in that way. Oh, wow. That's like a, 
a whole other one hour call which <laughs> you probably have if you want and, and yeah. i would love stephanie to be on that with me or or can i just like let me plug her please listen yeah, to her show better with dr stephanie shafali is actually her next guest um that episode is next monday um and she talks about this a lot especially if you're it's even more complex if you're an entrepreneur as a woman because yeah. you have the partner side of you like the the love partner you have the business leader side you have the mom side you have all these different things um and for us you know we we stay very careful to focus because when, you, when you're running a business you probably tap more into masculine energy um but then and this is maybe the advice when you when you're at home you have to change to your alter ego of getting back into feminine um, because that masculine energy that makes you an amazing business leader can often scare off men if they're not if they don't understand mm-hmm. what's going on and there's a dance um, and it's so important um, to also be the better you to tap into you know um, or, or create a safe space where you're with someone that you can talk about your shit with like what really helped us and we've been together for um, three and a half years. It's like creating a, I call it the bubble. So creating the safe space where if I feel triggered, I can actually say, Oh my God, I'm triggered right now. I need you right now. And so that we have like a, uh, like the code word for the other person not to be triggered at the moment to realize I'm not actually angry at you. I just, something's going on. Help, help me get through this thing right now. Um, and I promise for any of you who have had relationship struggles, there are dudes like me out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, we exist. And, and I, I cultivate those. So a lot of people in our community are conscious yeah. men yeah. who don't swing too much on the maybe hippie side. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the, I, I, there's always a, a perfect person for you. Mm-hmm. No one's perfect, but yeah. I think there's a perfectly aligned person for you based on who you are. Um, and yeah. it's, to me, it's having the clarity first around loving yourself and understanding what it is that you love about yourself. Like how I actually met Stephanie, maybe you like this. Yeah. Um, or not met, but in 2013, I was doing some kind of personal growth exercise where I had to write out all of the characteristics and qualities I loved about myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and not like, a physical thing more like you know i'm warm and i i love children and all these kind of and i had a list of 50 things and when i finished it i looked at the list and i thought oh my god this is the person i want to be with mm. this is the alignment it um and when i met stephanie it was like oh it was so easy to spot because i knew what i what what alignment meant to me and what i didn't want yeah yeah have you always been a conscious man or has it evolved through your depression and you seeking out different self-development? I mean, I think it's in us, us all, but at what point were you aware of this alignment and, and all of this? I think, um, I, uh, I don't know if I, or when I would have started to use a word like that, mm-hmm. but it's more, way more recent than not recent. Yeah. yeah. So in my twenties, I knew I was always giving mm-hmm. um, and I love people and I, love helping people that's always been there um but the idea of all of this has been more work to deal with traumatic relationships and and um seeing the patterns over and over again and wondering what the hell was wrong with me or thinking that what's wrong with me yeah and do you have conversations openly with other men about being a conscious man what does that look like and yeah that's really cool <laughs> Because I, yeah, there's not as many resources for that. So because you've built a community for men to be able to express that is really beautiful. I just, I happen to attract people like me mm-hmm. into my life. Yeah. So most of my male friends are like me. The conversations we have aren't about sports. Cool. Um, I don't really watch TV. So yeah. I don't know what's going on. It's more <laughs> about um, world changing things and ideas and um everything yeah that's really beautiful i've cried in front of male friends wow i don't know that that's very common 
Yeah, I don't know. It's common in your life. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I want to, there's a couple other questions that are coming in. So I want to make sure we get those before our time is up. I can stay a bit later. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to read the question first. And Sarah, if you want to unmute yourself and actually ask the question, because it's pretty long, you're more than welcome to do so. But Sarah asks, what is your approach in proposing something to someone you've built a relationship with? For example, after implementing the building of a relationship, how do you go to ask your speakers to talk at your event or be featured on your podcast and just take that relationship one step further? Cool. Love yeah. it. I have a framework for that. Okay. Um, because I think most people get that wrong. <laughs> yeah. And they get scared to ask for things like Sarah's saying here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'll use a case study mm. story to make it. Um, even more real. In 2016, when we were planning our first big summit event, um, I knew that to make it really work, I had to have some really epic, big named speakers. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not, you can't just call people and say, hey, I'm willing to pay you, even though it helps to pay them. Mm -hmm. um, but we had, so we had like Gary Vaynerchuk and Seth Godin and Robin Sharma, and um, it, was, it was a really big event. And Seth Godin is one of my heroes. I've been, if you don't know who he is, he's um, probably the top marketing author for like n good marketing, not cheesy, shitty, scammy things. Um, and I've read every one of his books, like 17 books. Wow. And I wanted him really badly. And I didn't have any relationship or connection, but I knew that he checked his emails, which is weird. Um, so I thought, how do you pitch the top marketer in the world? You can't bullshit him. He's seen everything. <laughs> um, what do you do? And this is where the philosophy came from, um, which is every single person is on a path. Every single person has a bigger future and a dream come true future that they want. How can you help them get closer to where they want to go before they ever help you? To me, that's the philosophy. And then it's figuring out, doing the homework to figure out, well, what does that person actually want or need? Because everyone needs something. Even if they're famous, even if they're successful, whatever it is, everyone has a path and then it's like for seth what well he's uber successful and he doesn't really need things what is it for him and then it took me a while to figure it out but for someone like him who's done so much work the thing they want is to know that they mattered to know that all of the insanity and chaos and hustling and crap they've been through has had a positive effect somehow so the email i sent him was i would love for you to speak at this event I'm a huge fan, but not only have I read all your books, let me explain how I've used your wisdom and applied it to build what I've built. And I actually had like a case study, like with your Purple Cow book, I did this. And with your Tribes book, I did this. And because of all of your work, I've not only helped raise hundreds of thousands for charity and I've done all these things, but now this event exists. And my, my invitation was, I would love for all of this to come full circle, to have you speak at the event that only exists because of you. And his, his response was, how the hell do I say no to this? Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So the idea is um, you probably have something you want, but focus on what they want first, even if you never get what you want. Like, how can you support and serve and help in an authentic way and do the research to figure out what it is first mm -hmm. um, and watch what happens? Like, I, I still do it. I still... I still will help people where I don't even know if I'll ever get anything in exchange for it or um, any kind of reciprocity. But I know that first off, it feels good to help. Mm -hmm. And it's like creating this huge bank account of social capital and goodwill that at some point will help you in the future. Yeah. And do you feel like you can use the same approach with people you do know? So you, these are people in your life and telling them, or just being of service still with them oh. and then asking them. Does that answer your question, Sarah? Yes, I have a follow-up. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh, there's your beautiful face. <laughs> um, hi, Gio. Hi. Thank you for answering my question. I wanted to know, so Vanessa and I have had a conversation about this at length and um, you know, I, as I mentioned, like I, in, in my question is that I do a really great job of building relationships because I thrive 
on building connections. My problem Vanessa knows this is I have trouble then asking for something. And it's not something that is a big ask or a favor. It's actually, I find that it would be beneficial for both parties, but for some reason, and I, again, this is probably a little bit more of a mindset and self uh, confidence issue. I don't know how to properly ask. So for example, let's say you built a relationship with one of your speakers that you've known for a while and you're thinking, okay, I want to ask them to speak at this event, but you know that they only speak at specific events and you don't want to bother them with your, for example, when you first started, you don't want to invite in uh, sort of, I don't know, ha ask them to speak at your smaller event that hasn't had a lot of people yet. So how do you position them and propose that? And you probably ask them in person, correct? And do you do like a whole thing or do you just speak from the heart? And how, what words, what are the words that you use? <laughs> um, okay. Sorry, there was a lot there. No, no, it's cool. <laughs> if I have to ask anyone, like, um, is everyone in the group entrepreneurial or how does that work? Not all of them, but a lot of people lend to that. Even if they're working a nine to five, they'll have a side hustle or something like that. Um, and how much trouble would you have asking for money? I have a huge problem. So <laughs> I end up trying to do everything myself. But I mean, as you know, in order to grow, you need some capital sometimes. And uh, I mean, Vanessa, you killed it. And I know we had this conversation where you actually had a coach talk to you about, uh, what was it like a presentation coach or something like that? Um, so I don't know if that's what I need, but I've, I've always gotten to the point where like I've set everything up, but for some reason I don't feel like I deserve Whatever, so I don't know what to say. I don't know how to. I think, you, I think you probably do know what to say, but you are preventing yourself from saying it because of stuff that happened to you when you were younger, or and what you were taught as a kid, whether it was direct or indirect, about what money means in general. Um, like to me, I've had this my own struggle with all of this. So I'm not. I'm not talking from some weird mountaintop. I, this is from personal experience that. Um, what I've now discovered is that money is just a story. Like price, money, all these things is a story. And people buy stories. And the story has to align with their story. So if you want to ask someone for something or for help, um, and I actually learned this from Seth Godin's newest book, um, This is Marketing, that people are either trying to elevate their status or protect their status. So how does them helping you or them paying you make them better in some way? Um, and, you know, in terms of the language to use, asking for help in general, uh, unless it's like you're sick or you, you're like in, in, in a dire scenario, um, asking for help comes from a weak place offering an opportunity comes from a strong place meaning uh, like the the visual you, you should have in your head is that um you're on a train or you're on a bus and the bus is leaving the station and the bus is going so do you want to invite the person on the bus with you like even when if if you want to have a different kind of analogy instead of pitching someone something uh, i love the language of inviting someone on a journey or inviting someone with you, beside you, to a bigger, better future somehow. And painting the picture of what that looks like. And talking about how together you can create change based on what that person wants. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, yeah, I also think being straightforward. I think even with all of the women, we've had sales trainings and it's really difficult for women to ask for things period like you are not alone people are commenting right now sarah saying you are not alone uh and i think uh, being direct is also really good just to ask like you know i'd love to to work on this with you i'd love to join in this initiative with you what would make it worth it for you what can i do and just straight up asking them you'd be amazed 
at how often they say nothing or it's just something so small that you didn't even know. So you're, you're not, there's no guesswork. You're just asking them, how can but we I make think this happen? Yeah. You, all, you also have to understand that what's happening in your mind isn't probably real. Mm -hmm. So let, let me give you an idea. Um, imagine you're a scientist and you come up with in your lab, the cure for a very rare form of cancer. And it's crazy. And then you're walking down the street and by complete serendipity, you run into a little girl who has the rare form of cancer. You have the solution. Are you going to tell her and her parents that you have it or are you going to keep quiet? Mm -hmm. you're, probably going to, you're probably going to want to speak up. Like, oh my God, I can totally help you. And it costs you money to make this thing. So you're going to say, well, listen, this is how much it costs. But it's going to cure your cancer. Would you like this? Mm -hmm. You're going to feel so good helping the person. The problem is when you make it about yourself and, and like the bills you have to pay and the, the money you need, it changes the energy of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But if you make it about the transformation you're about to create, you almost have a responsibility to help people. You have a responsibility to ask for, for their money as long as you know you can help them and you're making it about them. Okay, thank you so much. That was really helpful. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to what you were saying earlier of you wanting to be more authentic and vulnerable and shining your light because you have a responsibility to do that for others. Right. Yeah. We all do. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, yeah. I mean, I think you nailed it with both elements. There is strategy, but then it's also such a mindset thing. Right. Yeah. The what to say isn't as important in terms of what to think or how to feel more important about the scenario. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, thanks for asking, Sarah. That was awesome. Any other questions before we finish up? Okay, I'm gonna give it one minute. Oh, one more. Um, Jackie's asking, one second, it's a little bit longer, that she has a vision to help everyone in the world tune in to who they are and in doing so achieve world peace because everyone is living their dream. The work I do with sound um, is aligning individuals with their authentic song. I would be honored to have you on this journey with me. <laughs> um, and so, oh, there you go. She puts a little happy face. So I guess it was a question to connect. So if you want to connect, we I can help set that up after. Um, but if anyone has any other questions, uh, we will. Thanks for asking and for having the courage to do that, Jackie. That was awesome. Jackie does awesome work. And yeah, I think sound is such an untapped resource that we haven't, we don't talk about too much. Actually, um, Kanye West talks about it a lot with sound and vibrations, which is fun. I'm actually starting to like him a lot in his latest interviews. Um, but honestly, thank you so much for being here. I feel, I feel in alignment talking to you and I just feel my soul resonating with my authentic self. And so I want to also it's so important for me to say that because this is such an example of you being you and sharing you just helps everybody else be in alignment. And I admire that and want to do the same for my community. So thank you for continuing to be you and, and shining bright and, and taking us along on this journey with you. You're so welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Alrighty. Well, we're going to sign off. Thank you everyone for being here and for contributing and bringing your energy. This was such an awesome, fulfilling conversation and we'll definitely chat soon. Amazing. Okay. Everyone. Bye everyone. See you. Bye -bye.